my name is Tom Collier and this is a special guest edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Now, last week on the 11th of July uh, 2018, the Times newspaper uh, celebrated the publication of their 10,000th Sudoku puzzle. Uh, and as part of that celebration, they asked me to contribute a masterclass describing some, uh, some solving tips. Uh, and that appeared in, appeared in the newspaper. Uh, let me just uh, get that here. Get a copy handy. Oh, here we go. There we go. Masterclass in Sudoku. How to solve like a champion. There's me. <laughs> uh, and then there's a couple of grids um, there as well. And so what I thought I'd do for this video was to uh, explore um, in a slightly less static form um, some of those, those diagrams and solving techniques that uh, I put out in, in the newspaper. So there were, there were two puzzles, uh, the first of which featured in uh, this year's edition of the UK Puzzle Association's Sudoku Championship, uh, acting as a qualifier, qualifier for the World Sudoku Championship. Um, now this is a competition that uh, I put together every, well, nearly every year, um, uh, often with puzzles that I've written myself. So I was very pleased to get a puzzle that I'd written myself, featured in the Times. Um, it's a relatively easy puzzle, I would say, uh, with one sticking point, and that sticking point is the uh, what is what's described in the diagram in the Times. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, without further ado, go out and solve uh, some of this puzzle, get to the sticking point, and then we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about um, where we got to uh, in, in the diagram. So um, bear with me for just this first bit whilst we get some of the easy ones. So let's see. Getting used to this software now, I can actually type in all the things I see relatively quickly. Anything else I can see? Not so much. Um, so what I'll do before um, setting up the technique is I'll uh, just get, so you'll see I've put the four and the six in there with that pair. Uh, there's another little, um, so I think if you look at this bottom row, there's, there's another sort of pair you can put in. Uh, so not quite Snyder notation, but in this uh, in this row we need a 1, 3, 5 and 6, it can't be a 3 or a 6, so I'm going to put in the 1 and, one and 5 pencil marks like this. Um, so, uh, this is the one sticking point of the puzzle, and this is uh, roughly, yeah, I think this is exactly what I've got, got notated in the paper. You can see that it wasn't too hard uh, to get to that point. So in the newspaper what I do is actually I highlight um, this row here. Um, and perhaps this is something you just have to be relatively well practiced at spotting. Um, but you can kind of see here, we've got the three and four and six ruling out the possibility there. We also have a three and a four and a six here ruling out this cell, uh, actually in this column as well, if you might have noticed, looking down here, we're also ruling out the three, the four, and the six. So that means not here, not here, not here, and not here, which means there are only three spaces left for three, four, and six in this row, which is that one, that one, and that one. So we can actually mark that in um, as a triple. Uh, and then the sort of the, the corresponding corresponding spaces you've got one five seven and eight left to place that's not particularly helpful 
Uh, what is particularly helpful is um, looking at this column and particularly this, this box or these two columns in tandem. You can see now that we've ruled out the 5 from here. The 5 cannot go here because otherwise we don't have enough space for 3, 4 and 6. So instead the 5 very usefully starts pointing down here. Which does two things. It means we get this nice 1 which I've uh, sneakily set up there. Uh, and it also allows us to place the 5 there. Um, so there we go. It was, uh, one small trick. Um, I suppose the thing here was not just spotting the triple, but also using it to actually then then make some progress. It wasn't sort of it didn't directly resolve anything by itself, um, but then it led on to something else fairly close by, uh, which has let us make, make let us make progress. So um, I think this more or less cracks the uh, the puzzle open, and it's it's a relatively quick solve. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, finish it off. So hopefully this won't take me too long, but you never know. at this stage no. you know what I missed that one the whole time <laughs> there we go we're done okay what I've done now is to load up the the second of the puzzles that uh, I walked through in the um, in the article. Uh, and again, to give you a little bit of background, uh, this featured in the 2016 Times Sudoku Championship Grand Final, uh, won, I believe, by George Danker. And uh, this was a puzzle. Uh, I'd made the Grand Final, qualified reasonably well, it was looking good, uh, and this was a puzzle that left me absolutely stumped. Um, so I thought this would be a particularly good one to uh, revisit with a with a clearer head, and uh, yeah, there we go. Hopefully, hopefully I can kind of explain why I found this so tough and show you uh, some of the techniques that you need to actually solve it. Um, so again, what I'll do is I'll try and get some of the uh, the earlier earlier digits uh, and then we'll get to get to where I am in, in, the, in the diagram and then um, uh, where I am in the diagram in the, in the newspaper and then we can talk through that a little bit more. Right. There's only so much progress you can make with this one. It's a bit of a pig of a puzzle, I've got to say. Um, I'm not sure actually uh, whether whether or not um, George, uh, the champion in 2016, would have necessarily solved this by by getting it logically. I mean, sometimes spotting these techniques can be fairly time-consuming, and in, in that competition scenario, um, I, he could be forgiven for, for taking a guess to actually actually get the puzzle out much faster. Um, let me just see if there's anything else I can get. So, um, there we are. Five goes there. Then you can mark mark four seven there. Um, and then get five five and eight. Um, I think that's more or less where I've got to in, in the diagram. Um, 
it's fairly meagre progress, as I say in the article. I mean, we've placed a grand total of nine digits, and there's a lot, um, a lot still to be placed. Um, it's quite a busy looking grid as well, so there are lots of potential areas you might look at for quite some time before spotting something. So you might look at this one and think, well, I just need a 146, or you might look along here, um, or indeed you might sort of look up and down these, these columns. And what? Well, yeah, so, so actually the, the columns that I've highlighted, um, uh, sorry, the rows that I've highlighted there, these, these weak ones, which are often good areas to look at when you're making... Um, uh, when, when you uh, get stuck, are actually what you need to look at to make to pro make progress. Um, so I think Simon has, uh, in previous Cracking the Cryptic episodes, described the X-Wing technique. Um, but let me repeat it quickly here. So we look in this row, the four can only go in two spots, which I'm going to notate, here and here. So it can't go there, can't go there. And similarly, uh, here and here. Um, there we go. So what what this means is, um, well, we can we can do it both ways. I can highlight it here actually. So suppose we, we were to have a four, four here, then we'd have to have a four here, and we couldn't have a four anywhere else in the column. Or the other alternative. If we don't have a 4 in this row, then we must have a 4 here. That rules out to so have a 4 here. Uh, and again, it means you don't have anything in either of those two columns, apart from in those four spots. So what makes this very tricky is, well, actually, if you have a look here, so we can't have a 4 here, and we've ruled out the 5 and the 7, which leaves an 8-9 pair. So that was quite a subtle thing to spot with this X-Wing, actually. Um, and uh, not at all easy under time under time pressure. Um, I'm not surprised it left me absolutely stumped the first time around. But there we go. Uh, what this does now mean is we're, we're filling this um, column out with a 4, 5, and a 7. Uh, and actually, this one becomes placeable now because 4 and 7 are already fixed. So that's great. Uh, and in fact, yeah. So, um, Sam Kappelman Limes, um, who's qualified for this year's um, UK team at the World Sea Coffee Championship, um, suggested to me that you didn't need to use this X Wing further, but it does make life a lot easier. Um, he suggested that if you notice the 5.8 and the 5.8, uh, this this pair, this was enough to um, finish the puzzle, and perhaps perhaps it is. But I mean, here's here's something else that um, that I saw as well. So um, we actually have a pointing pair of ones here. Uh, so once 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 you have that, um, you actually can place the one there. Um, and using the X-wing again, you can put the, the six up here and four here, and that really does speed things speed things up. And um, perhaps you didn't need to actually spot that to finish finish off the puzzle, um, as Sam uh, pointed out to me. Uh, but now, now, I mean, it was it was quite nice to use use the X-wing again to get that six. Uh, and this is what cracks the the puzzle open. Um, so I just wants to get rid of that four there. Um, so I think uh, yeah, let's let's just finish finish that off, finish the puzzle off, um, just to kind of demonstrate how useful that six was. I suppose this is the uh, the part of the puzzle where it looked reasonably promising earlier on, and you just needed to get that one small thing and actually just. Uh, breaks everything open, and when, when that happens, um, particularly in a championship scenario where you're just racing through to finish the puzzle, um, that's that's very satisfying. Let's just see.
can see it's just pretty steady progress now. There we go. Yeah, easy, easy when you know how. Um, I suppose part of uh, part of the thing with these puzzles is actually spotting those techniques in the first place. Um, you know, they it's once once you spot the techniques and you use them, it all looks very easy. Um, I'd like to emphasise actually the really hard bit is in spotting and using them in the first place. So. Um, have the X-Wings with the Force, which is the first thing to spot, but then to use it as well to get this 8-9 pair. Um, pretty subtle. Um, and certainly in a competition scenario, I don't think many people um, at that final um, would have would have got that. Um, perhaps uh, Mark, who was also in that final, um, might might remember whether 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 he spotted spotted that or whether whether he took a guess as well. Um, but yeah, those, those those were the two two puzzles as, as featured in in the newspaper. Um, I hope you found it useful for me to talk through um, in person with a slightly less um, slightly less static point of view, uh, and perhaps see you again soon on cracking the cryptic.